an accurate measurement <clears throat> between the um, the side plates there because I ground a little off of there so I just want to see what it is so it fits this is a nice way you can kind of judge a fit too um, if you want a particular feel or whatever something like that okay all right let's go let's go make make a bushing all right this is a 954 aluminum bronze here which is a it's it's a good um, hard bronze alloy it has a lot of uses um, it's durable it's corrosion resistant um, and it's pretty hard too it's much harder than brass um, and it's, you know, as hard as uh, many steels. Uh, but it's also slippery when combined with other materials. So that's why we're using this particular stuff here. Alright, so we're going to do something similar to what, what we did to the, uh, um, the threaded stud. We've got we to put a hole through the side of the, both sides of this this way. But uh, I'm going to take some uh, anti-bozo precautions on this particular one since uh, <laughs> after what happened to that other one. Uh, I had it clamped this way, just the, the part and the drill grabbed. Uh, we're going to do this one a little bit differently just to show some different techniques. Uh, for one, I'm going to use a different kind of a cutter to get a, the initial hole through. This is a rota brooch, um, so this should help balance the forces and uh, as opposed to two flutes. And then I'll bore it to size. And what I did is instead of parting it off as a thin wall bushing, I left some grab stock on it here that I can, uh, you know, I can I can gronk on and get a really good grip on, and um, so I don't have to worry about it uh, moving around. So let's get that set up, and uh, and we'll pick up the center accurately, and then we'll um, pop some holes in it. So start out with that, and then what I want is this is just as extruded surface here, right? I don't want to use that as my reference, so. I'm just going to hold that in the V-block so that it's kind of straight with the world. And then, let's see, let's push it more towards the center so we're grabbing kind of in the middle of the vise there. Something like that. Okay. Now I can I can put some, uh, put the beans to it there. And then, actually, you know what? Um, I think we're going to leave, uh, you know what? I'm going to take that <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to drill into it um, and then what I want to do is I want to put something under here to support it so put a parallel and then once again we're going to use a little little baby uh, adjustable parallel under here which is you know like I said until you've used these things you, you just never you, you don't uh, know how many places you can use them there oops of course the camera's right in my way I can't see squat there All right, let's see what happens.
That's pretty. Alright. Call that good. All right, so it looks like we're uh, ready for Mr. Nobicus here. That's the next thing here. Um, so we'll make the knob, and then at this end here is a little dovetail mount for the uh, for the indicator dovetail. So um, we're getting pretty close here. So we got this uh, the base back from the heat treater here, <clears throat> and. Um, the, because of the uh, the differences in in masses at the different ends here, so this is fairly thin and this is fairly thick. This bore is distorted, um, so it's not very round anymore, um, and it's shrunken considerably on this end. So I left about I don't know, it was about two thou in the um, in the bore, and it's pretty close to that on the bottom. Uh, but up here we're about eight thou. Um, diameter wise down from the nominal so this end kind of er, shrunk down so we have a <clears throat> kind of a tapered situation so uh, we're going to do a little hard turning here uh, this is now at over 60 Rockwell uh, C so we're gonna we're gonna go in there with a uh, uh, CBN tool here and uh, bore some of that out of there before we hone it's a little too much to hone and it's um, um, it's tapered, so or significantly tapered, so that makes the honing a little trickier, at least with the hone, the little ball hone thing that I have. So I'll get this all set up, and then uh, we'll do some uh, some cuts in there, and we'll bring it in a little closer, and then that last little bit we'll probably hone um, um, to get a nice smooth finish in there. So for the press fit, so. Um, this is a, a little accessory here that's kind of nice because you can reach you can reach way the heck down in there, right? And you can check the bore in in a couple of places, okay? Um, so this is just a common, um, um, I guess they call it an ID setup, but uh, it fits on a it fits on a regular indicator, okay? You see a bomb using these all the time, and they're actually really uh, kind of handy. Gives you a nice long travel here too, you know, when you're indicating. But it inverts uh, your uh, <laughs> it inverts your uh, your four jaw pattern a little bit.
as you saw there on the entrance here I got a little bit of chatter and uh, what we got going on here is this particular CBN insert has a pretty large nose radius which is kind of suboptimal for uh, for boring applications this is one that I had right uh, I poked around and I found a different one here that's um, um, that fits this bar and it's got a much smaller nose radius on it so we're gonna try that one I got a few thousands left uh, so I'm still okay um, I just don't want to have a, a bunch of chatter and th this is kind of you know where the press fit matters here I don't want it to loose or you know a funky finish on it in there so I'm gonna swap tools and then we'll uh, get this down uh, a little closer and we'll do a little honing Sure leaves a nice finish in there. Yeah, we're knocking on the door. We're right there. So we got I don't know half a thou. I don't think I'm gonna mess with it anymore. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it. Um, probably just gonna run the hone in there real quick just to, uh, I don't, you know what, no, I'm not, it left such a nice finish in there that I am just going to leave it alone and uh, we're going to heat this up and uh, do a shrink fit on the, on the pin. Look at the, uh, look at the uh, chips from uh, the CBN tool, so they're you can see they got hot, obviously, right? Remember, this is 60 plus Rockwell C uh, material, and uh, that's a cubic uh, boron nitride tool. And the chips are just, just well, I wasn't taking big cuts either, you know. No A bomb cuts here. This is just little tiny shavings, but the chips are kind of interesting in that they're, uh, um, you probably saw some of the chips glowing uh, red hot as they came off, which is pretty cool, so. Setting a setting a stop here, just so we don't like overshoot when we uh, when we warm this up. I want it to drop in and not protrude from the back at all. Um, and in fact, we're going to come up to the edge of that chamfer there. So uh, let's uh, make sure I get the right end in there. Okay. Make sure this is tight as can be. Okay. Okay. Let's go warm that up. All right, here's the setup. So we've got a thermocouple attached to this, safety wired on, um, and I got a kind of a thermal mass here. Um, there's a step on the bottom, so I want to make sure that I'm referencing this surface, not the not the rim, uh, when I go to. Uh, well, actually, you know what? The stopper's going to stop it, so I still want this because it's got a broad contact to that instead of the heat coming through the just the little feet. It'll heat up a little quicker. That's why I did that. Anyway, uh, so we're starting out at about 71 degrees here. I'm gonna put it on uh, high to start with. Keep my eye on this for a while. And uh, we're gonna go, I don't know, 250, 275, somewhere in that region. Should give us about, with a delta T of, uh, you know, roughly 180 degrees, something like that, Fahrenheit. Uh, we should get about two thousandths on this bore, uh, which should fly in. Um, so hopefully Mr. Bozo's in South Florida right now and uh, uh, wandering around shops there. But uh, we'll see what happens. Be back shortly. Okay, so we're pretty close now to temperature. I changed the setup around a little bit. I decided what I wanted. I'm going to use this little linear bearing to help get me started straight over the bore just so I'm not trying to fish that while this is this is hot 
So I'll set this on there. This is reasonably parallel with this, or perpendicular to the bore. And then ideally it'll just go shoot, slide down and touch the aluminum. A couple more degrees and we're gonna go for it here. Um, I don't know. I got my, uh, my Bozo emergency tools here in case I need to whap on something. Um, I don't know. A couple more minutes and we're good to go. Let's get a quick measurement here. It's got to be quick. I want my my kilometer to heat up. Okay, so I'm showing two two and a quarter thousandths over right now. So I'm just sending. I'll just look. I'm mean, it's on setting four right now. Okay, cross your fingers. Done. Ha. Just like we wanted to. Beautiful. So yeah, the temperature is falling because the heat's transferring into the uh, into the rod. Actually, turn it off, though. And now, what I want to do, I'm going to put the fan on it so that it cools off quickly, and uh, then we'll play with it uh, after it's cooled off. Okay, so now you're starting to get a look. Uh, a visual on what this thing uh, looks like and uh, how it's going to work. So what's next? So what's next is uh, we're going to grind the, uh, the little feetsies on the bottom. Um, but I thought we'd do a kind of a first order check just kind of see uh, you know how bad things are and how much work needs to happen. Now I can tell you right now there's a little bit of rock to this and you know that would be expected on a heat treated thing with four feet on it so no work has been done to the feet yet so the trick is now to get this perfectly perpendicular to the base right so the way we're going to do that is we're actually going to sweep uh, we're going to sweep around but thinking about it and then talking to my buddy Robin um, we can't use this surface as a reference uh, because what we care about is the surface here and now this is this is can rotate about this cylinder but what we want to do is we don't want it to to track on this this lower surface so now the the question is how do you hold that in the right place and and sweep around right well what we're going to do and i made a little uh, <clears throat> little calibrating tool here and that's this guy here and it doesn't look like much so it's got a center in it on the inside and a couple of magnets and then what we're going to do is we're going to put a ball here so everything is going to be suspended off of this center okay and it has a bushing this bushing has got a little bit of clearance here but what's going to happen is it's going to track on that all right so let's put a little little dab of uh, some uh, good stuff on here so that it rotates nice and easy Drop that in there, and you'll kind of see what's going on in a sec here. And then I put magnets in here, try not to suck the ball off. So that slides down, and then this will suck this up Oop, like that. So now we're we got a gap here, and you see this whole thing rotates. So now we can do a, a nice clean sweep around here without tracking you know this could be cam shaped for all we know we just don't know and frankly we don't even care about that surface what we care about is here and the pin axis okay so this is on the pin axis this is hanging from the center basically so anyway that's how it works um, the calibrator so we put an indicator here and then we sweep around like this and it should be zero all the way around if this is nice and perpendicular okay so we're going to do a first order check here in a sec and uh, see what things look like. I haven't made the indicator mount for the, uh, the rod on the other side, so we'll just put a magnetic, magnetic dealy bopper on here. If I can swing this around. And we'll just put it out somewhere in here. So, let's see what we got here. I should probably mark the feet too, so I know where those are. Okay. Um, okay, so here's one. Here's another one. And that will 
be there. And I want to be somewhere over there. Okay. So let's make sure our indicator is touching. And there we go. All right. So first is, okay. So the indicators, can you guys, I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, indicators moving a little bit. All right. So what's that? One and a half thou from nominal. So that's kind of lined up with that foot. And it's bouncing a little bit, so it's rocking in that direction. Let's swing it around over here. So yeah, I'm one and a half, one, a little over one. Let's see what we got in this direction here. Okay, this direction is pretty good. It's pretty solid that way. All right, so what's our total? Uh, so, I don't know, we're about zero there. This is just gonna be kind of an average here. Uh, okay, zero. What what is that? Uh, two tenths. One and uh, one and a quarter. Bow. And half. Okay, so with this, this is actually kind of good news to me. Um, means there's not going to be a ton of lapping. Um, so I do want to grind it though because I I spent some time making a, a fancy grinding setup so that we can dust those feet off. So I'm kind of excited about playing with that. So we're going to go ahead and grind those feet, then we'll lap them and uh, see what we can do here. And the idea is that when you, when you swing this all the way around and it makes this gigantic circle around here, it's zero all the way around. So that's the goal. Um, now this is a half foul indicator here. Um, you know, a, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a hundredth of a millimeter uh, um, uh, indicator. Um, so we'll switch to something a little finer uh, as we uh, as we kind of hone in on it, but it's behaving as expected. Um, once again, the, in use, the real indicator will be mounted to this, um, and this is adjustable for attitude and stuff like that. And the beauty of this is you can move this around and you don't even care, right? Because this is perpendicular. So once this is set, you bring your part up to this, and Bob's your uncle. So let's. Uh, Check out the grinding setup now. All right, this is the this is the grinding setup. I needed something, basically, functionally a really long V block to to hold the rod in here, and uh, we'll plop the rod in here in just a minute. Um, and my friend Andy had given me this, you know, it's like a 20 inch sign bar or whatever it is. It's uh, yeah, it's a 20 inch sign bar. And so I just built some uh, kind of V blocks uh, setups here that uh, that the the rod's going to run in. I don't want to run it on the centers. I want to run it on the the OD of the rod. So I want to reference that when I grind the plane on the bottom of the foot. Okay. So let's uh, kind of get this ready to go. We got to do a little checking here. Flip it over here. And I'm going to use my uh, precision ground flat stones here to uh, find any uh, dingus McGee's in there and I found something. I'll just kind of stone that off lightly. Now, you know, if you, you need to read about precision ground flat stones. I'm not taking off any material. I'm just looking for humps and burrs that, uh, that interfere and affect accuracy. So, uh, all right. And then we rub these together to knock any crud off of them. And uh, these are lapped. These were diamond lapped, and they're basically optically flat. Um, and uh, okay, so I'm going to take this over on the surface plate. We'll get it set up, and then we'll measure the pin and see if it's parallel with the base. Because uh, I didn't take any super califragilistic special care on making these v-blocks so because uh, I figured I can always uh, adjust with this a little bit if I have to so okay so you can kind of see how we're going to grind this here this will go up on the surface grinder and it'll get counterbalanced and I've got all that worked out so uh, you'll see that in a minute and then we're going to side wheel these uh, the little feet here right up in this area and I'm just going to hand rotate this I got a little end stop um, so you'll see all that coming up, just kind of explaining the head a little bit. So right now, what I want to do is go over the top of the pin and make sure it's parallel with the base here. So 
let's go ahead and do that. Here's my little handy dandy uh, converted semi Noga deal here. All right. Find the high spot right there. Throw up. All right. Here. Oop. Okay, so that's plus plus two, plus one and three quarter. Foul. So it's off a little bit, which is not not surprising. Like I said, I didn't uh, I didn't go nuts when I made those uh, those V blocks. All right. So what that means is this end has to come up a little bit. Um, I don't know how much. It's kind of a proportional thing because of where we're pivoting. Um, let's, oh, <laughs> let's use, I got some uh, handy post-it notes. <laughs> These were for a. Uh, that's Randy Richard, and that's a bomb. <laughs> so let's uh, let's do this. Let's lift the sign bar up, and we'll stick a bomb under there. And then let's put one on the other side here. Let's put Randy Richard on the other side. All right, so we've jacked this up, the thickness of this paper here. Let's see what, uh, what's that, what that's done for us. Oop, all right, well, let's see here. I got a little cold, sorry guys, I get the sniffles here. So there's zero. And, oh, pretty good. Um, that is probably close enough. Ooh, that's, geez, that's really close. Um, okay, let's double check. Make sure. Shoot, that, okay, we just figured out our shim. That's great. Uh, A-bomb and Randy Richard shim uh, is gonna, <laughs> gonna be our thing. So there's zero, and I think I was minus one-tenth. About a tenth, so I, I'm not going to screw around with that. That's fine for what we're doing because we're going to lap out the last bit. So, um, um, yeah, sweet. Okay, well, that's kind of handy because I don't have, you know, you don't have shim stock in those kinds of increments. Okay, so uh, um, you know, you'd have to fuss around a little bit to 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 get that. All right, so I got some surface grinder setup to do over there, which will be kind of cool. You guys will like the setup. It's uh it's pretty uh uh unconventional. Let's just call it that. <laughs> but it'll be fun because uh, I'm using a small surface grinder to grind a pretty big part uh and do some uh um kind of interesting stuff. So, okay. Well, I told you you're going to like this setup. <laughs> this is pretty uh Pretty far out there. So we've got the sign bar on here. It's stuck to the magnet. Our V-blocks and we got our rotation here. And this is a ball weight surface grinder so if you have too much weight hanging off of one side you can actually lift them up. Well it's true on any any grinder. So what I've done is I attached a, just a bar here uh, to the sign bar and then these are um, lead filled shot bags here. Um, to kind of counterbalance this. I checked this out all on the bench. I put a, a fulcrum here in the, uh, uh, on that center line there, and then I kind of, uh, which is roughly the middle of the chuck, and then balance that with some weights and stuff. Now, what we have here is we have a, a micrometer stop, and then it's probably hard to see, but there's a ball in here that's sitting in the, the center of the grinding center of the pin. So we're just gonna push up against that and then turn this. And then if we wanna uh, disengage with the grinder, we can come out a little bit. And I've got a, whoop, okay. <laughs> if you heard that little tink, that was the ball falling out. I probably have to use uh, something a little bit better. I used some uh, extreme pressure uh, lube to kind of to kind of glue it in there um, okay so anyway I'll come up with a uh, something a little bit better maybe I'll cement it in there temporarily um, and then that's going to run on the end of this micrometer here it's just a one inch micrometer straight micrometer 
And then I can actually dial in my grinding here too, uh, a little bit at a time, and then come up and, and work with that. I can also use the, uh, the cross feed too, although once I get set up, uh, uh, I may not want to do that. We'll just use that. So anyway, that's kind of the setup. So here's, here's the fun part coming up here, is I got to make sure that this thing's square with the world here, right? Normally you'd have a fence on here, um, or you'd, you'd be able to indicate along this or indicate along this to kind of get things straight with the world, right? Because if this is at an angle, we grind a, a big cone, basically. Um, so it took a little thinking, and, uh, but I got a way to do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sweep these, one of these pads, so I'll sweep it on this side, then I'll rotate it over and I'll sweep it on the other side off of the spindle of the grinder. Um, and hopefully I can get, get it reasonably square that way and not uh, ruin what uh, we measured over there a little while ago, uh, which wasn't bad. So uh, anyway, that's the, that's the theory. <laughs> Let's uh, see if we can make it happen. So let me get set up with the indicator and then I'll bring you back and uh, we'll get this aligned a little bit and go from there. Bring that up, up to zero. Okay, let's come back across. So, let's see what we got now. Oh, come on, baby. All right. I think it just, just skimmed it. This is going to take a few minutes here, guys. Come across. And then ultimately, I'll, uh, I'll indicate the same pad by rotation. Alright, alright, we're getting closer. So we're within two or so now. I got no control over where it's pivoting, so uh, um, that's why this is is gonna be a little bit squirrely for indicating purposes. All right, We're sneaking up on it. All right, let me get this indicated, and then uh, I'll be back. All right, so we're all set up. Got the wheel dressed. Uh, that took a little while. Because uh, I forgot to do it before I put the darn part on there, so um, so we're just gonna fish around and see. So uh, you can we're just we're just grazing these. Oh yeah, okay. So I'm just gonna dial in a little at a time. A couple of tenths. I'm keeping a little bit of pressure against the uh, the ball here. Well, I'm looking for is just a cleanup on those feet. Oh yeah, no, it's looking pretty good. I think this is going to be okay. Uh, there's, the forces are really low with small cuts, so I'm not super worried about it. I put the arrows on there just to keep uh, Mr. Bozo from uh, showing his face.
so we ground the feet and then what I did was I um, I lapped them just a little bit just to scrub them on a surface plate with some 600 grit paper just to take any grinding fuzz off of the feet I, did, I didn't do any proper lapping on them yet so we're just gonna do a little check here and uh, see what the state of the state of the union is here in our uh, um, where we are after grinding after our what, hairball grinding <laughs> I'm using my little black face indicator. Hopefully, you guys can uh, you guys can see. And then I'm going to do it on top of a gauge block here. That way, I can just uh, I don't have to sweep all the way around. I can just sweep the the quadrants. Um, like I said, hopefully you'll be able to see this this indicator. Those white face ones are just really really hard to. Uh, they're really uh -huh. yeah, maybe I had to get on there. Yeah. Hey, maybe I ought to get on one of the feet there. What do you think, Mr. Wizard? All right. Just knocking any uh, hysteresis out of it there. All right. And I come off the gauge block and I'll spin around. And then go on this side. Okay, so what is that half thou? That's a half thou, so half thou coming up. Let's see here. That one's pretty much on. I'm gonna have to switch to a tense indicator here. I'll do that one. And that's about that's about a half thou. Now let's do the okay. So we got we got no rock on that direction. And we got no rock on that direction. So the uh, the feet are um, the feet are all bearing pretty well. So they'll bear they'll bear even better once we uh, we uh, lap them all coplanar. Okay, so that's pretty good off the grinder. That's well within lapping range there. So keep in mind, it's it's half of that, to, you know. Um, so let's let's see which way are we going here. I gotta figure out which feet need to go which way there. So there's zero. So this is where. Okay, so that's. So that's down. So that side's down farther. So that means this has got to come down this way. Okay. It's you, you got to think about it. <laughs> like I said, you don't want to inadvertently. Okay. Same thing there. So it looks like these two. Let's see. Before I open my big mouth here, let's check this one here. Yeah, okay. So these two are good here, zero, zero on these. And then we're, we're down, uh, so the indicator is reading more, right? So when you go down on that side, the indicator comes up, right? So that's down, so we need to lap these two on this side. Um, so what we'll do when we do that is We'll lap. Uh, we'll put it up on a lap, and then we'll we'll stack some weight on this side, uh, probably between these two. We'll add a little bit of weight to that side. Do a little lapping. Come back and check. So there's going to be a lot of back and forth checking, uh, and then we'll get more sensitive indicators on it, and uh, we'll tune this thing up, and uh, and then we'll play around with the the vertical and see what we get. So uh, um, anyway, I'm pretty stoked. The grinding came out pretty good. Um, let's actually um, get you guys a look at that real quick if we can. Um, I kind of jumped a, jumped ahead there. Hopefully you can kind of see that. All right. So this thing's actually pretty damn heavy. Pretty heavy. Okay, so next next video uh, we're gonna lap some feet. Thanks for watching.